is happening budget builders and welcome back to the channel behind me here we have a 1978 formula firebird that has been off the road for 21 years we're going to attempt to rescue this car today and try to get it running That one's a no-go. <laughs> From the ashes, she rises. Okay, <laughs> we got one to take care of. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's time we see if we get this thing out of its hole. Of course, these door handles come apart on these. Thankfully, we do have the keys. Neutral. Go ahead, Dad. Oh, yeah. Just me. Woo, those hinges are ugly. I might need your help to have. I, this car's cool. I, it definitely a bit crispy and on the crusty side, but dang, it. Uh, I'm excited to get this one running. We've got some Winston winners on it. Hopefully, this car is a winner and we can get it to fire off. One thing that the owner had told me was that this 305 had been swapped out for a 350. And sure enough, you can see our wire brush there. We did verify that it is a 350. It's an early 70s 350, which is good because that means we have a little bump in horsepower. Instead of 135 horsepower from the 305, we've got 145 from that 350. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's get this thing blown off out of here. We'll start pulling these spark plugs and seeing if we can get this motor turning over. You know, we hadn't had a ton of GM cars, and it's not because we don't like them. It's just, it's just you don't see them around that often. Cute little two-barrel in there. HEI distributor. It's cool. Factory AC still on this car. That's weird. It's like a mid-rise like mid or a high-rise intake with a two-barrel on it. OEM manifold still. Just cool to see that this car is still so original other than the motor itself there. And I don't know about y'all, but Laredo Brown formula is just giving me some Rockford Files vibes. Uh, this one, this was gonna be fun. No water, definitely, uh, that's nice. Sealed really good, so no moisture issues. It doesn't appear, even though that breather was loose. Definitely gonna wanna change it before we start it, though. But let's go ahead and get these spark plugs pulled. Ooh. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're pulling out number two here. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this is plug number two. That is a crusty old Autolite 26. 
but the combustion side of things looks really good. Number four, again, not too shabby. Number six. Not too shabby. And number eight. Nice. Working down this side, we'll go easiest to hardest. So we'll get number seven here. I will think about getting number seven here. Nice. And number one. Whew, nice. Oh, good, 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 good. As long as this motor spins over. Looks like the car was running pretty healthy last time it ran. Uh, you probably noticed there is no alternator on this. So apparently that's what was good. What That's what had happened was the alternator went bad. They had some kind of charging issues. Took it off. Never did get the opportunity to put it back together. And it kind of just got parked and forgotten. So we're going to go ahead and soak it down here in just a little while. These pulleys are pretty crusty. We will uh, let's throw a wrench on the front of this thing. I want to turn it over by hand first before we even hook a battery up to it. Gotta load that thing. There you are. Moment of truth. Let's see if the motor's free. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Oh, you beautiful thing. That was rusty through these pulleys. But next step, let's throw a battery in this thing. Still has the original battery cables on it. So what we'll probably do, because I don't have a GM battery, I'll throw a marine battery in it that we can top post. We can put those on. Uh, we're definitely gonna have to be careful with this guy. Don't want it jumping out on anything. Big old sparkies. Let's throw a battery in it, see if it turns over with the key. Scratch that. We're gonna run to the store. I wanna get oil and a filter. Because as you know, I hate to start pumping that gross oil through this thing. It's obviously pretty dark, very old, and very thick, and I hate to gum anything up. Plus, we can see if there's any if there's any sludge down in the bottom of the pan that we need to take care of first, because even turning it over, we want to get some oil pressure going in this thing. So let's go ahead, drop the oil, pull the filter, and get fresh in it. Nice. A little thick, but... Not bad at all. Definitely needs a change. This one does have a magnet and it is nice and clean. Talking about clean, this car is actually really solid underneath, which is surprising with uh, that rusted out quarter and everything after sitting in that field for as long as it did. So I've gone ahead and pre-lubed our new AC Delco filter, and I like it. It's a kind of a larger one, so it's got a bit more capacity. And then, of course, we always like to run a high zinc additive and some fresh 10W40. Right where we want to be, and uh, you can actually see what's on the dipstick now. <laughs> And what we've got on hand is a marine start. So top post here, we should be able to use that if it'll be perfect. No major sparkies. See if we got any life. Uh, no light bulb in there. Ooh. It didn't turn off when I told it to. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> Park. Beautiful. Is it popping? 
Oh man, don't you love an ATI? Oh yeah. Fresh spark plugs. Dad's gapping them out to 45 thousandths. Hold on, mine's like three. Three what? Three thousand. Oh, does it look like it got dropped? <laughs> oh, sheesh. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get these things back in here. Man alive, fresh oil, firing. This thing is gonna run. Now I'm not sure uh, that this thing will even attempt to run without building that carburetor, but it's worth a try. So let's throw gas to it. I am gonna go ahead and pull it off of right here at the carburetor, just in case this thing does have some nasty rotten gas in it. We don't pump it straight in the carburetor. I kind of wonder if this thing was run dry, maybe, expecting it to sit for a while, as dry as that line was. It's like blowing dust out. Is it? Is it pumped up? So it must be trying. <laughs> Looks like we've already got oil dripping off the rockers just from turning this thing over, trying to get that fuel to pump. So awesome. I'm gonna throw a little primer bulb in line here. No one as dry as it is, try to give this thing a little bit of a chance. Oh, oh did you see that? <laughs> oh, just nice. Oh, now it's clean. Oh, yep, now it's. Ready? <laughs> yep. <sighs> now it's siphoning. So that doesn't mean we have fuel pressure, but... Alrighty. Yeah, I'm glad we did that. You see that crud mm -hmm. that shot out of that thing? Uh, why did that... <laughs> we are gonna have to get in that carburetor, I think. I just it's actually... It. It's actually in the... That's a first. <laughs> We, uh, we don't have an alter uh, water pump anyways, because we don't have an alternator. So let's see if this thing fires off real quick. This is exciting. Always just. You ready? Oh yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Choke is frozen. Go ahead, that choke is frozen. Holy fuel. Go ahead. What the? What the? <laughs> you are daggone flipping straight. It just needed the, uh, I guess that's not a hammer. <laughs> this is, this is the Chevy fixer right here. <laughs> okay. All right, I had, all right, go ahead. Fill up. 
Oh my goodness. God, that's so much fun. There you go. Need some balls? Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely had some rat's nest up in there. Definitely got some noisy lifters, but we don't want to run it too long because we don't have the water pump hooked up. Let's see if we can find a hose and this is the camera tripod back here. <laughs> Went ahead and picked up a new alternator for this thing from O'Reilly's in hopes that she ran, she does. Let's get this alternator on, let's get a belt on it. Let's keep it running. Uh, I am, uh, I'm probably gonna go with, we'll have to build that carburetor because uh, it only has two bolts. It's missing a bolt there, it has one there. It has a bolt here and it's missing one there. So that uh, it's probably got some vacuum leaking going on. I don't know if it's just a Southern thing, but here in South Carolina, we got uh, mud daubers. I guess they're dirt daubers other places. We got red mud clay. Oh, and they get into every little hole they can shove stuff in. Some ready rod, a couple spacers, and we can get this alternator stuck on here. I'm gonna check this charging system. Take a look right here. Oh, heck yeah. 13 and a half. Woo! How crazy is that? Sitting for all those years, just about rotting down into the ground and it's sitting here idling. Now it doesn't take any throttle. Try to rev it up, you can hear it has a massive vacuum leak. That whole carburetor's like coming apart. So I think we definitely need to go ahead. Let's pull that thing really quick. Let's throw it in the vat and let's throw a kit in it, get it back in there and see if we can't get this thing taking some throttle. I don't know how this thing idled. Carb is just dumping its guts all over the place. I mean, that thing is not sealed in anywhere. Wow, I have got to say, I can understand with the distributor, the reliability of those ATIs, as long as they stay pretty dry, normally they will fire. That carburetor on the other hand, you couldn't have fooled me into thinking that this thing was gonna run. It's it's a little dangerous though, it is, you can hear it's leaking tons of vacuum, it's pouring gas out the sides of it two broken off bolts let's go ahead and get that thing pulled let's throw it in the the let's go ahead and throw it in the vat let's get it cleaned up let's get a carb kit in it take care of the broken off bolts there see if we can't get this thing run a little bit better and start taking some throttle and we might try to uh try to throw this thing in gear if we can get it running better our throttle cable and then once we remove it we'll have the kick down that comes off as well 
as our springs. Oh, wow. It's so funny seeing that carburetor twist around right in the middle. That's a weird one. You can see where it was leaking all the way around the whole backside here. What the? Wait, why is it moving with it? Why is what moving with it? Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. Is it only supposed to have two bolts? What's that? What the? GM kind of engineering is that? Well, we are going to have to check and verify we don't have any warpage on the base of that carburetor and i assume the reason it was leaking is probably just shrinkage over the years of the head sometimes you tend to have that issue hopefully a fresh kit and new it's gaskets and the carburetor <laughs> We'll seal up a little bit better. <laughs> I hope y'all are keeping an eye on what's going on here because, uh, I guess I might be. So, I'm gonna go ahead. Whoa. <laughs> uh, I bet we didn't get a float. I'm gonna have to get one for this. That is weird. I'm surprised it functioned. It's like melted off. But I do also want to. There's some trash, but I've got to say, for this car to crank like it did and start and actually get it to run, they had to have run this thing out of gas, which might also be a good thing. Whoa, this thing caught on fire in the carburetor. Check this out. This crap is burnt. And that is melted. How sketchy. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and count our number of turns on our <clears throat> idle air control here. That's about two and a quarter, just so we can set those back the same for initial startup because it did, again, surprisingly run. All right, in the ultrasonic we go. Now what we run in here is just purple power. This is a uh, probably 20 to 80 percent water mix. We'll let it run for about 15 to 20 minutes and we'll come back here in a bit. Let's take a look at our soup here and see what we got. Toasty and alive. I love these ultrasonic cleaners and this is the cheapest one you can buy this is an ebay special but uh it does the trick one thing you want to do before going back together is if you look at all these these are all little passageways all these little divots and castings in here and we just want to verify that every little passageway flows the way it should especially here on your fuel air mixture and here at your accelerator pump and everything Perfect. You may have noticed just disintegrated as soon as we pulled it off the seal for that accelerator pump. So that's why we change them because they're normally dry like that, and sure enough, that one would have been gone really fast. Got that choke plate working pretty good. And so what I found is when this bent, it actually pinched that top a little bit. So we did have to do a little filing to that plate, but I definitely wanna 
have that choke working if we can. Carburetor definitely looks tremendously better, but the real question is, will it perform better? And actually uh, throttle up for us and not pour fuel out everywhere. See how our carb job went. Did uh run it all now. Not overflowing. Oh yeah, I lost the nut. Because we do have the choke hooked up, we'll just bump it over and see if it wants to run. Right. Hopefully it'll run. Hopefully it'll take some throttle. is mint! Now you can hear we are idle a little high because we have all the linkages properly working and when the choke is still on a little bit it holds that throttle open a tad bit. Dang this car sounds good. The moment of truth. Will this thing take some throttle now? Go ahead dad. Go ahead. Whew. Definitely burning some chunk out of that exhaust. Kind of fling it all the way back over here. It's taking some throttle though. I think as this thing warms up now, you know, we've got some temp in it. That's why we did throttle it up a bit there. This thing's only getting better and better. Like it's got a kink on that. And you can tell from up here, tremendously better. We don't have that massive vacuum sound, especially when you give it throttle. Like it did before. You can see just running here for a bit. Great condensation and condensation. I know some people freak out about water coming out of your tailpipe, but condensation is signs of a healthy motor. It's weird sounding. I think it's got some kinks in it. Maybe it might be rusted out. It might still have a rat's nest in it. It's probably why it's smoking. Because it definitely blew some mouse junk out. Let's see if this thing goes into gear. Even though we do surprisingly have some fluid, there ain't nothing there. We might be able to try to bleed it. It is disc up front, which is kind of cool drums in the rear and the rear the rear is empty so you know that's going to be the wheel cylinders completely shot but we're in neutral that's good <laughs> wonder why this thing was parked let's check this transmission fluid because uh we have a lackage of gears. <laughs> well, I think I know uh, some of the problem. It looks like uh, some of our transmission fluid evaporated. Thankfully, this isn't a Ford because it takes the cheap transmission fluid. <laughs> you know, we're at least make your three or three quarts low with nothing on the dipstick, maybe more. Well, we ain't got a Ford in there, Mike. Ha ha! We ain't added a quart yet. No. I don't know if you could hear that. It's still really low, but it went, it was like whirring and it was like you were letting a clutch out. Was, we got a gear though, at least reverse. Let's get this thing topped off a little bit more and we'll try forward. That's 
Okay. Well, it took just shy of a gallon to get it up to the full mark. But let's see what we got. Instant reverse, neutral. Heck yeah! We're gonna be driving this thing. <laughs> and throttle. This is exciting. I don't know who built that carburetor, but it's pretty good. <laughs> Well, there you have it. All these years tucked away in that field is not gonna hold this Firebird down. That fire breathing 350 is back to life and actually running really well. Definitely burning tons of crud out of this thing. Topped off the transmission fluid and it goes into gear. So in our next episode, we're gonna attempt to drive this thing for the first time. You can see we've got all the tires holding air we did valve stems and uh, we had to we spent a lot of time cleaning the uh, the beads i don't know why i love these winston winners these tires have to be 35 years old probably when did winston quit when did they get rid of winston i don't know <laughs> but they're cool and i hope we can find another set kind of similar to this because i think it really just makes the car we'll drive on them through the yard that we can't hit the road with these these are some of the worst tires I think I've ever seen that actually attempt to hold air for a little while. But I really hope you all have enjoyed. What a blast bringing this thing back, getting it to fire to life. And let's continue working on it. If you haven't already and you enjoy this kind of stuff, be sure to the subscribe button notification bell. And if you have been a part of the channel, we really do appreciate it so incredibly much. We have so much fun rescuing and bringing these cars back to life, taking them from where they've been forgotten for so long and getting them back out on the road. But that's gonna wrap it up. Peace out and catch you all on the flip side.